Produced by Liang Gu, the appearance of officialdom author, Li Baojia. Chapter 01, The Squire is a laggard who wants to become a famous scholar. It is said that there was a village 30 miles south of Chaoyi County, Tongzhou Prefecture, Shangxi Province. The only people living in this village are Zhao and the second surname Fong has no other clan. This village is called Small or Big, and it has 20 or 30 households. My ancestors have been farming for generations. When it came into the hands of a grandfather named Xiao, he actually hired his husband to teach his son how to write books. When it came to his grandson, he suddenly got a scholarship from the school. The people in the village were short-sighted, and when they saw that the scholar was selected, it was a big deal. The people in Hezhuang all praised him, and the man named Fong gradually lost his place. The man surnamed Fong was jealous, and there were a few people who deserved the money, so he opened a school at no cost. They also went to the city and invited an old master who was a scholar to go to the countryside to teach their children how to read. This person's surname was Wang Mingren. Because he was old, he was determined to make progress and went to the countryside to teach with all his heart. Within a few years, several talents were actually created. Some are also able to make a couplets, and some are also able to recite a few lines of poetry. Among them, one of them is very talented and actually uses his pen as a lecture. I like these bosses very much. On the double ninth festival in September, everyone discussed whether to invite this gentleman next year. Wang Ren was delighted when he saw that the pavilion had been re-elected. The father of this student who can give lectures is Fong Bikai. In front of his house, there used to be two big trees hugging each other, one on the left and one on the left. Therefore, the country people called him Fong's family at the head of the big tree. Seeing how capable his son was, Fong Bikai said that starting from next year, he would give his husband four copper coins in addition. Not a problem. It was said that this year was the year of the big competition, so the man named Xiao sent his grandson to attend the big examination. After taking the exam, I go home and look at the results every day. Needless to say. After the double ninth festival, one morning, while everyone was sleeping, they suddenly heard the ringing of a horse bell and were awakened by it. When I opened the door and looked around, I saw a group of people crowding towards the west. Ask carefully. It is said that Mr. Zhao passed the exam and passed the examination. At this time, Fang Bikai followed the crowd to watch the excitement on the street. After getting this information, he quickly ran to the door of Zhao's house to visit. I saw a group of people wearing red tassel hats. I'm busy posting reports there. Since his son started studying, Fang Bikai also learned to put several loads in his belly. At this time, he was focused on the newspaper, reading one side and reading the other. Good news for your master Zhao Inwen. Passed the Shangxi Provincial Examination for Undergraduate Studies and ranked 41st in high school. The messenger of good news is Bu Yuan. He looked and looked and read again and again. While he was smacking his lips and talking, someone unexpectedly tapped him on the shoulder and called him in-laws. Fang Bikai was startled and took a closer look. It was none other than old man Zhao, the grandfather of Zhao Wen, the new candidate in the examination. It turned out that this was the way to go. Because the Zhao family was selected as a scholar, he was already interested in it. He hurriedly asked someone to act as a matchmaker and promised his third girl to Zhao Wen's brother. So old man Zhao rushed him to call his in-laws. He took a closer look and saw that it was his close relative. He didn't even have time to enter the hall, so he climbed down to the street outside the gate and cowed out three times. Old man Zhao didn't return the courtesy and hurriedly helped him up. Fang Bikai brushed off the mud on his clothes and said, Do you believe what we say in the future? We used to say that the eyesight of the squires in the city is very good. Ten years ago, the stone in the city the squire, king of the archway, came down to visit the grave. I borrowed the tip from you in this room. Mr. Wang had nothing to do after dinner, so he walked to the study room, where he happened to meet a group of students. Mr. Wang was happy for a moment and said, I'll make one for you too. It rained a little bit that day just now. The first couplet written by Mr. Wang is the word rain. I was thinking about it, and your young master blurted out what it meant by rising sun. Mr. Wang nodded and said, the words rain and sun are three words, although they are a bit different. Finally, I have a good tone. This kid may have some potential in the future. Think about it, doesn't this comply with Mr. Wang's words? Old man Zhao said, that's not the case. If you hadn't mentioned it, I would have forgotten about it. It's September now. Around the end of the month or the beginning of the month, Mr. Wang will definitely come down to visit the grave. At that time, the in-laws called all your children to wait for Mr. Wang to test them. I wish your son-in-law would be like my little grandson in the future. Fang Bikai heard this. My heart is filled with joy. After talking for a long time, we said goodbye and went home. At that time, it was already after lunch, and his family served food, but he refused to eat it, but he was alone, pacing back and forth in front of the corridor of the study, hands behind his back. 
He kept talking to himself, saying, good news to the young master of your house, and, be you Lian Yuan, the man who brings good news, but the family members didn't understand it. Thanks to Mr. Wang in this study, he is a person who has developed before and knows the secret. After listening to it, he said, this is what the newspaper said. He couldn't help but read this, but why? He lowered his head and thought, I understand, it must be the Zhao family's child who got lucky today. The boss was greedy when he saw it, and the old problem of phlegm that confuses the mind and body came back again. He hurriedly called Lao San. Quickly help your father sit in the house, don't let him blow in the wind. The third child was the one who could give the lecture. After hearing this, he hurriedly helped his father in. Unexpectedly, his father ran into the study and knelt on the floor. He kowtowed twenty-four times to Mr. The Gentleman hurriedly returned the courtesy, and quickly supported Fong Bikai with one hand, saying, Dong Wang, I have something to say, where should I start? At this time, Fong Bikai could not say a word. He pointed his finger at his own heart, then pointed at his son Lao San, and then arched his hands at Wang Ren. Wang Ren understood three or four things in his heart, so he pointed at the third child and asked, Dong Wang, are you doing it for him? Fong Bikai nodded. Wang Ren Dao. This is easy. He pulled a bench casually and asked his boss to sit down. Then he took Lao San's hand and said, Lao San, do you know who your father is like this for? The third child replied, I don't know. Wang Ren Dao, it's for you. The third child said, for me? Wang Ren Dao, didn't you hear that it wasn't your eldest brother of the Zhao family who won the imperial examination today? The third child asked, what does it have to do with me if he won the election? Wang Ren Dao, that's not the case. Although it has nothing to do with you if someone else is promoted. After all, your dad's eyes are always a little burning. The third child said, what does it have to do with me if he hurts him? Wang Rendao, that's why you are wrong. The third child said, what did I do wrong? Wang Rendao, your father is your son. Since he asked you to study. Naturally, I hope you will work hard and make progress, and in the future, like your eldest brother of the Zhao family, you will be able to earn a fortune. The third child said, what are the benefits of being elected? Wang Rendao, after passing the examination, you can go all the way up to become a Jinshir and become a member of the Imperial Academy. There are many benefits. Lao San said. What are the benefits? Wang Rendao, if you become a member of the Imperial Academy, you will get an official position. When you become an official, you can make money, you have to sit in court and beat people, when you go out, you can play gongs and shout. Ah, where do these benefits come from if you don't study or pass the exam? Although the third child is young, he heard. If you become an official, you will make money. Although he did not say anything, his heart was somewhat active. He remained silent for a long time. After another pause, he suddenly asked, Master, you are also a civil servant, why don't you how about going to become a jinshir and become an official? At that time. After listening to what his master taught his son, Fang Bikai felt happy for a moment, and the phlegm in his throat became more active. Later, when he heard what his master said about becoming an official, he would make money, he let out of a wow sound vomited out a large amount of sticky phlegm. He was just halfway through vomiting when he suddenly saw his son rebutting the husband's words. The retorting husband was speechless. He just kept the phlegm in his mouth and stopped spitting it out. He stared at it with his eyes straight. Sir, let's see what he says to answer the student. Wang Ren was stunned for a long time, his face turned red and white, and he looked very ugly. Suddenly he opened his eyes, blew his beard, raised the ruler with one hand, pointed at the third child and cursed, you bastard. I am out of kindness today and will teach you good words. It's time for you to teach me a lesson. Ask your father, when you invited me here, did you ask me to take care of you, or did you ask you to take care of mine? Students should take charge of their masters, this is great. This hotel is out of control. You must resign, you must resign. Fong Bikai had never seen his husband so angry before. Now he knew clearly that it was his son's fault that he collided with him and caused the trouble. But the phlegm in my stomach came up more and more, and I couldn't spit it out or speak out, so I grabbed it with both hands in a hurry. Some foam came out of his lips. The third child was still there mumbling, if you are a better one, go and become a jinshir official and show it to me. Don't just hang around in our house. After hearing this, Wang Ren added fuel to the fire and rushed over with a board to fight. The third child was crying and jumping, and the noise became louder and louder. When the uncle of the third son heard that he was not good enough, he rushed in and patted the third son twice. He also bowed to the husband a few times, apologized a lot, and helped the brother out. Press does not indicate. Let's talk about old man Zhao, he has been extremely proud since his grandson won the exam. At that moment, there were people from the newspaper room, living in groups of three or five, 
living in his house, supplying the town with large amounts of fish and meat at daily prices, and even the opium cigarettes belonged to the Zhao family. Old man Zhao talked about the friendship between hometown, marriage, family and clan that he had always interacted with. I wrote a receipt and gave it to the person in the reporting room, and asked him to fill in the form and deliver it to each house. He was also busy looking at the time to hold sacrifices at the ancestral hall. The cook he hired in the city said that he would prepare pigs and sheep for the sacrifice, as well as gunners, musicians, and rightsmen. They are also busy choosing a day to invite them to have a wedding banquet to reflect their hometown, marriage, family and clan friendship. Everyone is invited. He also said that now his grandson has one Xiaoyan, and from then on, there will be more people of the same age walking around. He was also busy asking carpenters to make six flagpoles, two in front of his house, two on his grave, and two in the ancestral hall. I was busy making a plaque again. I want to ask an old Hanlin gentleman to inscribe the three words, Xiliandi. After much deliberation, there is no such rich relative in the city that I can ask for, only the squire who is the neighbor of the tomb. I go to the countryside to visit graves in spring and autumn, and I have met him several times. Therefore, Yuan Yuan sent a generous gift. He wrote three words to implore him, and asked the painter to finish it overnight, and hung it in front of the door. It was so glorious. I was also busy making a set of cotton robes for my grandson, which were promptly ordered, so that he could wear them to accompany guests on the day of the celebration. After all, old man Zhao's ancestors and grandson are all countrymen for three generations. With limited knowledge, he was able to take care of so many things there. It was all thanks to his in-laws who invited him, Wang Xiaoyan, the king of Shibin, to come over and help him, so he could be so orderly. At that moment, another big red and gold post was prepared, which read, I would like to choose the third day of October. Because Xiao Sun Xiuwei was lucky, he treated Bo Jiu and waited for Taiguang. Right below, Zhao Dali leads his son Bai Shou and son Wenzai to pay homage. The red envelope label on the outside has the three characters, Master Wang, written in the middle, and below it is written the eight small characters, Jin Shi ranking at the stone tablet tower in the city. As you all know, the person invited was Squire Wang. In addition, he wrote a letter to Wang Xiaoyan on the 4th and 6th, saying nothing more than admiring him, thinking about him, and begging for his favor when the time comes. Old man Zhao asked for another bet. He said that he would send his children to drive the donkey up to the city before the first grade of junior high school, so that he could ride down after the second grade of junior high school. Two cottages were cleaned here so that he could stay for a few more days. After sending the post, Mr. Wang agreed to come. Old man Zhao was overjoyed. If you have something to say, it will be long, if you have nothing to say, it will be short. Looking at the days, one day is like a day. The Zhao family is as big as a family. They are busy day and night. They are already exhausted and exhausted. On the dark morning of the third day of the lunar month, old man Zhao got up from the Kong, woke up his wife, and the whole family got up, started a fire, boiled water, washed their faces, and changed their clothes. Have breakfast. Everything was done, it was time for the chin pie, so we rushed to the ancestral hall to offer sacrifices. At the moment, Zhao Wan, who had won the imperial examination, was leading the way, followed by his grandfather, father, uncle, and brothers. Entered the ancestral hall door. Several members of the family came out to welcome him. There was only an old man with a beard hanging from his mouth and a long dry pipe in his hand, sitting there motionless. When Zhao Wen saw him, he recognized him as the clan leader and hurriedly came over and called, Grand Eunuch. The old man nodded. He looked him up and down with his eyes, then asked him to sit down alone and said to him, Master, congratulations, you are now a member of the emperor's family. I don't know what kind of Yin power our ancestors have accumulated. Today we should all be here you are alone. I heard what the older generation said. It is not easy to win an exam, when you go in to take the exam, three generations of your ancestors followed you in, waiting at the dragon gate to help you carry the exam basket. Otherwise, how could we carry something weighing more than a hundred kilograms? He also said that Mr. Wen Chong was the examiner in the underworld. On the day when the results were released, Mr. Wen Chong, wearing a gauze hat and a round collar, sat on top, surrounded by many judges below, writing the results. Whoever is chosen in the underworld will be chosen on the list in the earthly world. That is absolutely correct. Until this time. Those three generations of ancestors who passed the exam had to go to the underworld to see the results, and also went to the Jade Emperor to thank them, and they couldn't sleep for three or four nights. Sir, it is really not easy for these ancestors to survive to this day and accept your offerings. The father and son were talking in the room, and suddenly there was a noise outside. When I asked what was going on, I saw Zhao Wen's grandfather, his head covered with sweat, stomping his feet and scolding the cook, saying, they still haven't come yet. These bastards don't eat good food. Tinguizi told Mr. Wang that he would send them to the Yaman. He was cursing and holding a big hat in his hand. 
He used it as a fan and swung it back and forth. He was so angry that his eyes were red dot. Just as he was talking, he saw the cook picking out a bowl. Come in. Everyone complained about him. The cook replied, My lord. From morning to now, I have walked more than thirty miles hungry, for what purpose? I didn't even see half of the old money, but said that I would be sent to the Yaman first. In the city. The high officials in mansions, Hanlin and Shangshu. How many times have we served, and never have we seen him, a cunning nouveau riche, pretending to be a master in front of us? Squire Wang opens his mouth and Squire Wang keeps his mouth shut. For a gentleman like him, I'm afraid he will pick up Squire Wang's shoes and not let him go. While scolding. At the same time, he slammed the ladle for cooking on the ground and said, I won't cook anymore, wait until he delivers it. Here everyone saw that the cook was angry and refused to cook, so the ancestral temple ceremony could not be completed and everyone collapsed. Fortunately, Zhao Wen's uncle came over and said good things to the left and right. After finally deceiving the cook, he cooked the same thing ready-made and brought it out to serve as an offering. At that moment, the chief minister of the clan recommended Exine Xiaoyan as the chief priest, and the clan leader accompanied the sacrifice, and everyone kowtowed. Although Mr. Zonli was shouting beside him, they were all countrymen. If you don't understand this rule, there are some who bow first and then kowtow, and there are also those who kowtow first and then bow again. Li Xing saw that they were uneven, so he had to let them muddle through. After offering sacrifices at the ancestral hall, he returned to his room. Even if people come and go together, there are still more people wearing straw sandals. There was a steady stream of people sending gifts, the most was 100 copper coins, and the rest were 20 or 30, no matter how little they were, they were gone. Look at the sun heading west, people report that Squire Wang is coming down. The three generations of old man Zhao and his grandson have been waiting anxiously for a long time, those who were having wedding banquets had to wait for Mr. Wang to arrive before the banquet started. Everyone was hungry and impatient to wait. Suddenly I heard that Sai was coming. It was like falling from the sky, and everyone came out to welcome him. It turned out that Squire Wang was riding in a car. Before he could reach the door, Zhao Wen's father took a step forward, gathered the animal and brought it to the door. When Mr. Wang got out of the car, the three of them hurriedly bowed to each other and brought him in like a phoenix. Sit down first at the top. The only guests invited here are Wang Xiaoyan and Bin Dong. Wang Xiaoyan and Wang Xiangshan were from the same family. Wang Xiaoyan was a generation younger than Wang Xiangshan, so they were called uncles and nephews. His boss Fang Bikai also wore a red hat, a white hat, and a sky blue coat because old man Zhao had said that today he wanted to ask Squire Wang to test the talent of his son, the third son. Stay with me below. But there were no boots on the soles of his feet, only a pair of green cloth shoes with green beams. Squire Wang sat down and shouted, come, before he started talking. I saw a second master wearing a red tassel hat, and he said, zero. Squire Wang said. Have you explained the little fun we brought? Before the second master could reply, old man Zhao already had a small red envelope in his hand and said to Squire Wang, I'm asking you to spend money again. This is something I definitely don't dare to do. Squire Wang is willing to comply. Old man Zhao had no choice but to accept it and asked his grandson to come over and thank the prince. As soon as tea is served after eating, it is called a banquet. Squire Wang was seated in the middle, although there were several seats on both sides, they were all people wearing straw sandals and short bats, there were also some people who could not get on the stage. They were all waiting to eat on the patio. Old man Zhao didn't understand the rules of serving wine and banquets here, so he entrusted Wang Xiaoyan to act as the host on his behalf. At present, Wang Xiangshan lives in the middle and faces south, Wang Xiaoyan faces west, Fang Bikai faces east, and his grandfather and grandson sit at the bottom to keep him company. After drinking for a while, there were three rounds and five dishes were served. Wang Xiangshan, his uncle and nephew, talked about someone who was selected by the provincial chief examination this year. The Wei Mo, who came out must be pure, elegant, and outstanding in his field. He also talked about several new filial piety and upright officials in Cabin County today. All of them were trying to figure out their skills, and before they were listed on the list, they were determined to be prosperous. It was as expected, it shows that the articles are valuable and the names are worthy. When the two of them were talking happily, they unknowingly drank a few more drinks. It turns out that Mr. Wang was also a double-ranked jinsher. He served as a supervisory censor. Later, he returned home due to old age and illness, and taught in the county academy. The table is now full of people, and apart from Wang Xiaoyan, there is no one else with whom they can talk. Although Zhao Wen said he won the new examination. Unfortunately, he is a young newcomer, and Squire Wang still doesn't take him seriously. As for his grandfather and Fang Bikai, by this time, they had both become gourds with sawed mouths. They could only hold a pot to pour wine and hold up chopsticks to give food, 
and there was no place for their mouths to insert their mouths. So I had no choice but to remain silent. When Wang Xiangshan drank to his heart's content, his thoughts and ideas started to flow, and he couldn't help but loudly said to Wang Xiaoyan, Old nephew, how many years of luck do you think this making art has left? When Wang Xiaoyan heard this, he felt in his heart puzzled. He couldn't answer a word, he picked up a meatball on his chopsticks and didn't put it into his mouth. He just opened his eyes and looked at Squire Wang. Squire Wang nodded his head twice and said, This is a long story. It goes without saying to everyone in the country. As far as our Shangxi province is concerned, Mr. Lu Runcheng has created many talents. Mr. Yan, who entered the cabinet to pay homage to the Prime Minister, and the nobleman who was in the lobby of the Ministry of Justice, had not studied Mr. Lu's craftsmanship since he was a child. Only later did we have such a big economy. As he spoke, he pointed at the ancestors and grandsons of the Zhao family with one hand, and then said, as far as I'm concerned, I remember that year, I was only 17 years old, and I just learned to write and write, and I learned from Mr. Sher but Ong Sher. Although Mr. Sher was an old Gongsheng student and had failed to pass the examination in 13 competitions, he had memorized the manuscripts of Ren Zaitong by heart. I still remember that as soon as I started, what he asked me to read was Zi Yin Quan, which was a way to get people started. I was only taught to read half a chapter a day. Because I have a bad memory, my husband cut out this article, pasted it on the table with paste, and asked me to lower my head and read it, but I just couldn't remember it well. I don't know how many beatings I received and how many times I was punished by kneeling because of this boss. It is only now that he has earned the title of Jinshir in these two rankings. Well, even though he suffered a lot, he was still not unjust. Wang Xiaoyan said, this is consistent with the saying, which is called only when you endure hardships can you become a master. Don't talk about anything else, just these few sentences. Even if you don't have all your experience, you wouldn't be able to speak so kindly and meaningfully. Upon hearing this, Squire Wang couldn't help but beam with joy. He patted Wang Xiaoyan with his hand and said, that's right. Nephew, you can say this. Your article is really well written. Now, although I am not seeking official career, you have no intention of becoming famous either. You are teaching disciples in the countryside, and I am teaching in the city. They are also promoting education for Mr. Lu and cultivating talents for my holy dynasty. The relationship here is very important. Nephew, don't underestimate yourself. This heavy burden lies with my uncle and nephew to maintain our destiny in the future and endure all the hardships. Although Brother Zhao Shi is currently a new member of the Imperial Examination, he is still of our gentle lineage. In the future, the holy religion will be prosperous and the past and future will be prosperous. Who else could he do besides me? Do your part. Boy, I'm reluctant. Boy, I'm reluctant. Speaking of this, he closed his eyes unconsciously and started thinking. Zhao Wen couldn't help but be in awe after hearing this. His grandfather was a practitioner of Tongfang Bikai. He knew a few things about it at first and knew that what they were talking about was nothing more than articles. Later, Mr. Wang's mouth was full of nonsense, and he made many idiotic images. He smiled but did not dare to laugh, and had nothing to say. When I was wondering, I didn't pay attention to the noise and noise outside. After asking carefully, it turned out to be Mr. Wang's second uncle. Because his master gave him a gift of two cents of silver, Zhao Wen's father spent three copper coins on him, which he found too little, so he scrambled for more. Zhao Wen's father said, your master only gave you two cents of silver, but the exchange value is less than thirty dollars. Now I give you three copper coins, which is already extra. The second master said, if you don't add extra money, you will come from a long way, and you will always have to eat a bowl of rice. Zhao Wen's father wouldn't give him food, so he would be clamoring for it, he would go to the kitchen to grab some noodles, but the cook wouldn't agree. So the quarrel broke out and went all the way to the main room. Squire Wang stood up and scolded, you bastard. There is no such thing as Wang's law. At that moment, Wang Xiaoyan came out to do evil things. He took out two copper coins from his own pocket to buy sesame cakes for him, and he was speechless. After sitting down, Wang Xiangshan was still angry and said, I will definitely take the film and send it to the Yaman when I get back. I will give this bastard hundreds of blows and give him a second lesson. After all, old man Zhao is a kind-hearted person. After hearing this, he quickly interceded for him and said, A person who has received official punishment will die and become a ghost. He will never be reincarnated. Doesn't this destroy him? If you don't accumulate good deeds, just come back and teach him a few words to warn him next time. Squire Wang remained silent after hearing this dot. Fang Bikai suddenly remembered what old man Zhao said, asking Mr. Wang to test his son's talent, so he got up and left his seat to find his third son. After calling for a long time, back and forth, there was the shadow of the third child. Later I found it in the kitchen. Only then did I see the third child stretching out his oily hands and gnawing on the bones. 
As soon as he saw his father coming, he used his oily hand to rub it on his brand new clothes. His father hated his son for his lack of progress and his lack of clothes, and his eyes were burning with anxiety. Holding back his anger for the moment. Without saying anything else, he first took a piece of cloth and wiped his son's hands, saying that he would go with him to see Squire Wong. The third child is a person who cannot get on the stage. No matter how glamorous his father says, he always refuses to go. I couldn't help but hate him for a moment. He slapped his ear hard and made him cry. Everyone came over to persuade him to stop. Seeing this, I had no choice but to give up. Here, Squire Wang ate a few more dishes and stood up to leave. Old man Zhao asked Wang Xiaoyan to say for him. My grandson is young and has never been out of the house. Is there a housekeeper in the palace that I can't use? Please recommend one so that I can follow my grandson to the Beijing examination next year. Squire Wang also agreed. Just now everyone sent them out of the gate, got in the car and left. If you want to know what happened next, let's listen to the explanation next time. Chapter 02, Qian Dianchi's colleagues talked about official interests, and Zhao Xiaoyan was bullied by slaves in his lower ranks. It was said that the Xiao family held a congratulations. After a few days of busy work, a teacher from our school called Mendu to send a message, asking Zhao Wan to go to the province that day to fill in the personal confession. There are now three generations of fathers and sons. I bought wine and meat, treated the doorman to a feast, and gave him a few hundred copper coins. After the door fight went away, Zhao Wan hesitated about how to fill in the personal confession. Fortunately, he asked the senior Wang Xiaoyan for advice, and he taught him everything. Zhao Wan was overjoyed. His grandfather also discussed with his in-laws Fang Bikai and asked Wang Xiaoyan to go to the provincial capital with him so that he could ask for advice at any time. Firstly, Fang Bikai was forced to do so by his great relative, and secondly, it was a major event that his daughter's eldest brother-in-law won, so what else could he not want to do? Immediately, he agreed. Old man Zhao was very grateful. I took a look at the calendar and saw that October 15th was an auspicious day for everything, so I decided to get up on this day. Because he didn't have enough livestock, he asked Fang's family to borrow two donkeys. In a few days, several relatives came to send gifts for farewell, and Zhao Wan accepted them all. Stop gossiping. In the blink of an eye, it was 14. His grandfather, his father, had been busy all day, at night, he didn't even sleep that night. He was so busy doing this and that for him that he was restless. Early in the morning on the 15th, Zhao Wan got up, washed his face, and had a full stomach. The animals outside have already been taken care of. After a short pause, Fang Bikai and Wang Xiaoyan also walked over. Zhao Wan kowtowed to his grandfather and father to say goodbye. Old man Zhao bowed to Wang Xiaoyan again and asked him to take care of his grandson. Wang Xiaoyan hurriedly returned the courtesy. After the ceremony was completed, they were sent out of the gate together, mounted on the animals, and headed for the city along the main road. It turns out that it was just a few days ago. Squire Wang received a letter saying that if Brother Zhao Shi went to the province to fill in his personal confession, he could come to the city and stay at his house for a few days. So Zhao Wan and Wang Xiaoyan walked for a long time until they entered the city and went to the stone archway. Wang Xiaoyan is a familiar person. The doorkeeper has always recognized him and invited him in immediately without any obstruction, but this was the first time for Zhao Wan. Fortunately, he was always careful and watched carefully after getting off the donkey. I saw a pink and white wall in front of the door, with the two characters, Hongxi, written in it, two flagpoles on the east and west, on the left and right of the door. The H-shaped brick wall is polished with water, the two black painted doors have polished copper rings. Hanging outside the door is a signboard, encouraging Qin and Jean Relief Branch, on both sides are two tiger-headed signs with the eight characters, important place of the bureau, and, close to no one, and there are two half-red and half-black sticks. Hang on the sign. Inside the gate are six blue painted screen doors, with a plaque with gold characters on a red background and the words Jinshir written on it. There are several reports of new imperial examination candidates on both sides, some of which are recognized, and some of which are not. They recognized each other, but they were all of the same age. On the walls on both sides, there are several red and black hats and two leather whips hanging. The person at the door let him in because he was the one who came with Wang Xiaoyan. Turning around the screen door, you will find the entrance hall. There are three halls above but there are no tables, chairs, or stools. Against the wall on both sides. There are several title cards placed horizontally and vertically, Bingzi Imperial Examination Candidate, Jinsheng Jinshi, given Jinshi origin, hand-picked to rule, Jiangxi Road Supervisory Censor. Zhao Wen knew in his heart that these were Mr. Wang's own official titles. There are also two sedan chairs that are not old but are new. After turning another screen door, there is a large courtyard with five halls above. It was already October, and a large red foreign cloth curtain hung in the middle. Last time I went to the countryside with Mr. Wang. 
The second master who Wang Xiaoyan gave him two copper coins to buy sesame cakes to eat was coming under the eaves of the corridor, carrying a drowning pot. When he saw him coming, he stopped quickly. Fortunately, he didn't forget his past relationship, so he came up to Wang Xiaoyan, gave him a thousand dollars, and asked him when he came. Wang Xiaoyan replied, we just arrived. The second master looked at Zhao Wan and seemed to recognize him, but he ignored him and asked him to sit in the room while talking. Zhao Wan also followed in. It turns out that there are three unified halls in the middle and two rooms at both ends, there is also a plaque hanging on it, which is Chengsha Hall. Three words, below it is Wang Mingwan's signature. Zhao Wan had read the ink scroll and knew that Wang Mingwan was Mr. Lu Men who wrote the Ning Zichang Zhai manuscript. He was a literary sect of the generation, so he felt awe. Hanging in the middle is an imperial pen with the words, dragon and tiger, written on it. But it is carved on stone by Zhu Tua, there are a pair of couplets on both sides, which were made by Mr. Yen at the beginning of Yen Dan Shu, there is an ancient tripod, a vase, and a mirror on the natural table, there is a square table in the middle, eight chairs on both sides, and four coffee tables. On the beam above. There are also several things that look like god statues and niches, painted in red and gold, which are very beautiful. Zhao Wen didn't recognize what it was and quietly asked the old man for advice. Wang Xiaoyan said to him, this is the imperial edict. Zhao Wen still didn't understand what Gao Ming meant and was about to ask. Inside, Squire Wang had come out, dragging a pair of shoes and holding a cigarette pouch in his hand. Wang Xiaoyan hurriedly came forward to say hello, and Wang Xiangshan helped him up. His follower, Zhao Wen, was already crawling on the ground. Wang Xiangshan hurriedly came over and bent down to help him. Although he said he was returning the favor, his legs did not move. When Zhao Wen got up, he returned the favor. The guests sat down. Zhao Wen sat on the second chair in the row on the east side, and Wang Xiaoyan sat on the second chair on the west side. Squire Wang sat on the third table to the west to accompany him. Wang Xiangshan first asked how Zhao Wen's grandfather and father were doing. Unexpectedly, when he arrived at this time, not only did his grandfather ask him to go to the city before leaving, but when he saw Squire Wang, he said hello to him and could not say a word. Even after hearing what Squire Wang said, he didn't know how to answer. His face turned red, and he squeaked for a long time before replying with the word, okay. Seeing him like this, Mr. Wang didn't say anything else to him, and only had a few words with Wang Xiaoyan. Between conversations. Squire Wang mentioned, there was a relative named Xian, whose surname was Bo Fang. He was my wife's second brother, and he served as a magistrate in Jiangnan. That year, Xian Futai came to take office, and within three months, I didn't know how to get rid of him. It was a mistake. Unexpectedly, although he only served one term. I actually got a few cents back from the money I spent in office. As soon as you enter the city, the new houses you see are his residences. Regardless of whether you are an official, big or small, you must be like him, then your official position will not be in vain. Now he has entrusted someone to plan a recovery for him. As soon as the new year comes, I also want to go to Beijing to see if there is any way to seal the eight elements and come out to make his history. Wang Xiaoyan said, since there is a way, why not work as a county magistrate? After all, it is Xing Yin. Wang Xiangshan said, isn't that the case? I also persuaded him several times. Unfortunately, our brother-in-law has another idea. He said, although the states and counties are officials close to the people, after all, the system is more noble. There are some things that I cannot get involved in or do, it is inconvenient for me. It is inevitable to rely on the master and the second master. One more handler, one more discount, and if you exploit them layer by layer, you will be limited in what you can get. Therefore, instead of being a classics historian like him, he can do everything personally and seek truth from facts. Nephew, what do you think of him? It's quite good. This man is quite talented as an official, and he is indeed a good financial manager. Wang Xiaoyan said, as the saying goes, being an official for thousands of miles is only for wealth. That's exactly what he said, said Squire Wang. Now I think brother Zhao will go to Beijing next year for an audition. We can ask him to follow our brother-in-law all the way and ask him to greet us in all matters, but he is very good at it. Wang Xiaoyan said, this is the best, what else can I say? At that moment, Wang Xiaoyan saw that Wang Xiangshan ignored Zhao Wen. Seeing that he was sitting there feeling unhappy, I told him this again. Zhao Wen had no other words to answer besides saying, okay. Wang Xiaoyan asked again on his behalf, old uncle Chen's house, should I go over to pay my respects? Squire Wang said, today he went to the countryside to collect rent. I say good to you, see you next year. I left the two of them to have dinner. They stayed in a room at the west end of the hall for one night. They got up early the next morning and headed for the provincial capital. So Xiaoxing stayed overnight and stayed in Lufei for only one day. They had already arrived at the provincial capital and found get down and pack your luggage. 
Let's say that although Zhao Wen won the imperial examination, he was not proficient in socializing in the world. Although we met Mr. Xuetai twice during the quiz the year before last and the exam this year, one of them sat taking roll calls and the other took the papers with a basket, but they never had a conversation with each other. This time, if someone is successful and comes to visit him, he will inevitably have to chat with him for a few words. When he usually meets richer people, he becomes restless and talks incoherently. What's more, Mr. Xuetai, the imperial envoy system is so majestic, but he has already fainted from fear before meeting him. Fortunately, Wang Xiaoyan was there to greet him and give him advice at any time. Everything he could not think of was thought of for him. The first night, I taught him how to kowtow and how to reply. It was like performing a ceremony in the Mingluan Hall in the spring and autumn. It was difficult to teach him. Thanks to Zhao Wen's cleverness, he practiced all night long until dawn, and actually kept all the etiquette in mind. After a short pause, Wang Xiaoyan woke up, and Zhao Wen quickly urged him to get up and wash his face. He changed his robe and held the notebook in his hand. Wang Xiaoyan also asked him to seal four ounces of money and give it to Mr. Xuetai as Zhi Jian. He also brought some money to pay for the expenses. When he arrived at the camp gate, he found the patrolman. Zhao Wen bowed to him, handed him the notebook, and begged him to return it to the Lord. In addition, he also gave the patrolman a door bag worth a fortune. There were too few patrolmen, so after much talk, I added another $200 and went back. After waiting for a while, the patrolman came out and said, Your Excellency, we are not seeing any guests today. He asked him if he had filled in his personal confession. Zhao Wen heard that the master was missing. Like a stone falling to the ground, let go of your heart. He hurried to Ching Chai's house and filled out the personal confession respectfully and explained clearly. Wang Xiaoyan took care of all the expenses for him overnight. Zhao Wen only spent a few lucky money here, and there was no other trivial matter. After finishing their work, they returned to their apartment, packed their bags, and headed back to their hometown. Wang Xiaoyan also taught him how to write by Zhizi for the imperial examination, so that he could prepare for the exam next year. Time flies like an arrow, the sun and the moon fly by, and the new year has passed in the blink of an eye. Zhao Wen's family was busy preparing for the imperial examination in Beijing. One day after dinner, someone reported to Wang Squire that someone had written a letter. When Zhao Wen opened it and read it, he found that the first half was nothing more than auspicious words for the new year. He also said, We have already agreed to go together with each other, and we will benefit from both. My old servant He Zhen. I have been with him for many years and he is very reliable. He is also familiar with the situation in Beidou. I hope he will be hired immediately. Zhao Wen knew that it was the housekeeper recommended by Wang Xiangkuan. He Zhen was wearing a red hat on his head. Wearing a blue satin cotton robe and a blue satin mandarin jacket. She also wore a pair of black boots with black foundation under her feet. When he met Zhao Wen, he asked for greetings and said, Thank you, master, for the meal. He also said, Master, please greet me, master. Zhao Wen was stunned for a long time because he had never seen him dressed like this in the countryside. I don't know what to say to answer him. Fortunately, He Jen knew what he was doing. Seeing that the young master was speechless, he asked the young master to take him upstairs to see the old lady and say hello. Zhao Wen had no choice but to go in with him and see his grandfather first. After seeing him, his grandfather said, This person is recommended by your prince. Monks come to see the face of the Buddha. Don't be disrespectful to him. Just let him live in the study. When it's time to eat, his grandfather will definitely take out another bowl of rice and two dishes from the pot for He Jen to eat. All the big and small things. No need for him to do anything. Later, Wang Xiaoyan came over and saw it, and said, Now that Mr. He is the housekeeper of the house, there is no need to be polite to him. Everything must be handled by him. After he is familiar with it, he can start with the elder brother. The Zhao family heard this. Gotta be like this. Then he was gradually sent to do things. On the 18th day, it is an auspicious day to choose a long trip. There is no need to elaborate on all the formalities of farewell. On this day, Wang Xiaoyan was still invited to accompany him to the city. This time, because I was traveling with Qian Dianshi, I ran straight to his house. After settling our luggage, we went to the palace to say hello. After meeting, they stayed for dinner, Zhao Wen still couldn't get in the conversation even though his uncle, uncle and nephew were the only three people talking. After dinner, before leaving, Squire Wang bowed his hands to him and said, Hear the good news. Then he bowed to his brother-in-law and said, Forgive me for not coming to see you off tomorrow. Let me know as soon as possible where you will live in Beijing. He also said to Wang Xiaoyan, Let's see you again, before going in. The three of them returned to Qian's house together and stayed overnight. The next day, Qian and Zhao. Get up together. Wang Xiaoyan waited until he saw them off before going to the countryside. The words are divided into two parts. 
Qian Jianshi had always been thrifty and frugal. Knowing that Ha Zhen was recommended by his sister-in-law, he called Ha Zhen to work together without a housekeeper. Two days passed. I couldn't help but forget the reason, and gradually showed off my uncle's money. I don't know how many times he Zhen cursed me behind his back. Fortunately, Zhao Wan was a newbie and ignored him. Kuang Jian, Qian Jianshi was experienced in the snobbery world, and now Zhao Wan is a new rich man. The future is limitless, although some things deceive him that he is a countryman and secretly make money from him, it is always better to do a good job in terms of face. I also learned that Zhao Wen's master Wu Hanlin had recently opened a workshop and was promoted to Yuchunfang Yuzanshan. The role of the official in the capital was unusual, and he wanted to curry favor with this path. One day after leaving the store and finishing his meal, he asked He Zhen to open the bed for him and light the cigarette lantern. At that time, Zhao Wan was holding a copy of Xinka Weima and pondering under the lamp outside. Qian Dianshi said, it's windy in the hall, so it's better to lie down on the cigarette shop and recite. Zhao Wan was obedient, so he came in with the article and lay down on the empty side of the cigarette shop, but he still couldn't read anything. Qian Dianshi couldn't stop him, so he took a few puffs of smoke himself. Then he ate some fruits, dry snacks, etc. He picked up the teapot and took a few puffs at the spout. He put the teapot down, picked up a copper hookah, and sat on the edge of the bed to eat the hookah. He couldn't finish the whole thing. Later, Qian Dianshi was really impatient with him being noisy. He took advantage of He Zhen to vent his anger. First, he said he was lazy and refused to do anything, and then he said he was buying steamed buns on the road today, and they cost four each. He insisted on asking for five and a half yuan each, so he made eighteen money for twelve steamed buns. What a bastard! In his head, He Zhen heard that his uncle said that he was lazy, and he was full of disapproval. Later, he said that he was making money, and called him a bastard. Your master, and said, bastard. He's our brother-in-law. Qian Dianshi refused to listen. When he heard it, he immediately put down his hookah, picked up a pipe and rushed over to hit him. He Zhen was not easy to deal with. When he saw him wanting to hit him, he he pushed his head into Qian Dianshi's arms and said, hit me. If you don't fight, you are our brother-in-law. Seeing him like this, Qian Dianshi couldn't do anything, and shouted, what a wild thing. Come back and write to your master. Even I don't look down on the good people he recommends. Hagen was waiting for a reply. Fortunately, the store owner heard the commotion inside and came in to try to persuade him before he pulled He Zhen away. Qian Dianshi is still shaking with anger. When the two of them were having trouble, Zhao Wen wanted to come up and persuade them, but he didn't know how to do so. Later, when the store owner pulled He Zhen away, he stayed there for a long time before saying, it's getting late, and old man Qian is sleepy. After hearing this, Qian Dianshi said to him sternly, Brother Sure, You need to manage the house like this. As a master, you must have some authority as a master. If a housekeeper like you is so talkative and can't manage him, and he offends his guests at every turn, how will he manage the people as an official in the future? Zhao Wenming knew that Qian Dianshi had brought this unhappiness on his own. Unfortunately, he was weak by nature and couldn't answer a single sentence, so I had to simply let him speak and listen blankly. Qian Dianshi added, I think when I was an official in Jiangnan, although the Yaman was small, there were three or five housekeepers, clerks, and servants. I have to control them all by myself. If I am not careful, they will make money from me. If your subordinates can't accept the treatment, then that's a big deal. Zhao Wen said, because he is recommended by the prince, grandpa has told him to be polite to him. So let him do some things. Qian Dianshi sneered and said, you want to let him succeed in his rebellion in the future, so you won't let him. This kind of thing requires me to scold him at least a hundred times a day and still be polite to him. What a strange story. Zhao Wen said. Since the old man said so, I will just leave him alone tomorrow. Qian Dianshi said, I'm not telling you to take care of him. I'm telling you how to be an official. Zhao Wen wondered, what does this have to do with being an official? I couldn't refute him, so I had to listen to him with long ears. Qian Dianshi added, if the family is in order, then the country will be governed. If the country is in order, the world will be peaceful. You scholars should know these two sentences. If a housekeeper is not able to govern, how can he manage the family? If he cannot regulate the family, he cannot govern the country. May I ask what the emperor's family wants you to do as an official? You don't have to go to Beijing to try and gain fame. Just like me, although I served as a historian in the past, I actually made some contributions to the royal family. Not to mention that everyone in the Yaman was under my control. Among those landowners, township covenants, administrators, and directors from four villages and eight towns, who dares to bully me? Although Zhao Wan was from the countryside, he also knew that Dianshi was younger than the county magistrate. He was happy to hear what he said, and he deliberately teased him, so he asked him, please tell me, old man, the official of Dianshi. 
Is it bigger or smaller than the magistrate? Qian Dianshir deceived him as a layman and said, It's generally big. Wherever he can control, I can control everything. After all, I am still the leader of this county. When something happened, I was polite to him and let him sit in the middle, so I called him Zheng Tang. I sit in the lower seat of honor, so they call me Right Hall. In fact, they are the same, regardless of size. Zhao Wen said, Dianshir is always younger than the prefect. Qian Dianshir said, He is in the prefectural city and I am in the county. I can't control him and he can't control me. Brother Zhao. Don't underestimate this official history, it is more difficult than other officials. When things go smoothly, I will give you the number one pick, but you still don't want it. What I said is not to look down on the number one scholar. I often hear people say that the people in the Hanlin Academy are noble and noble. In the future, if I am given a foreign position, either as an examiner or as an academic administrator, I will naturally have the officials under me come to show my respect, so I won't have to embarrass myself. However, it's not that easy after all. How can we, who are the classics and historians, not be compared to those of state or county, whenever we go out? He must play the gong and shout so that others will recognize him as an official. We can go out in plain clothes on the streets, in opium dens, brothels, casinos, everywhere. Those who recognize us are all our people in this county. Who dares not to come and flatter us? Those who don't recognize us are fine. When something happens, we will return his impartiality. In less than two years, who else doesn't recognize us? Within a year, I have a birthday and our wife has a birthday. These two birthdays are rigid. Come on, it's the old man's birthday, it's the old lattice birthday. Young masters get married and girls get married several times a year. Zhao Wen said, I heard brother Wang say that I haven't raised a brother yet, so how can I get married? Qian Dianshir said, you have never entered the official career, so it's no wonder you don't know. Most people like us who make classics and history work on birthdays and weddings to make some money. One incident requires one member. If there are five or six incidents in a year, one receives five or six members. A few hundred people were hanged at one time, which amounted to as many as 2,000 people. Really big things are not trivial. Don't say that I don't even have a son or a daughter. My father and mother were both dead for many years when I became an official. But it's just a trick to say that he is in his place of origin and not in office by using his name. The money is all for face. It is not a sin to suffer it. There are also those who do not care about face, as long as the matter depends on human beings, it is difficult to explain in a word. I don't think about any other benefits of joining the profession. As long as I was selected early, when I get the job, no matter what hardships and needs you have, as long as you have the ability, you can always succeed. Speaking of this, I suddenly heard someone say outside the window, it's getting late, and it's time for the guests to go to bed, so they can start their journey tomorrow. It turned out that the coachman got up to relieve himself in the middle of the night, and was walking by under the window when he heard loud talk inside, so he said these two sentences. Qian Dianshi laughed and said, Really, I was so happy that I forgot about my journey tomorrow. At that moment, he urged Zhao Wen to go to bed, and he ate a few more bags of hookah before going to bed. He was still on the road the next day. But he said that his three masters and servants had traveled all night and stayed on the ground in Hunan. There was another heavy snowfall, and we didn't arrive in Beijing until February 20th, Qian Dianshi and his group were busy going out to socialize every day. Here, Zhao Wen met several people of the same year and entrusted one of them to take care of the re-examination for him. It saves a lot of trouble to avoid having to ask for help. However, most of the re-examinations had passed, and it was not until the 28th that he was admitted to the third class along with some subsequent re-examinations in the palace, and was ordered to be allowed to take the examination together. Zhao Wen was extremely happy. Write a letter to tell his grandfather and father that they know. Since arriving in Beijing, the first thing I have been busy with is to worship my teacher. Zhao Wen consulted the same year, wrote the post, and sealed Ji Jian with two tails of silver and four tails of money as a door bag. His teacher Wu Zanshan lived outside Xunji Gate. Zhao. Qian and Qian live in Mishi Hutong, so they are not far apart. Zhao Wen got up early that day. Qian Dianshi got up too tired and was busy doing this and that for him. He put on robes and tied waists, all Qian Dianshi did it himself. He called to Hogan again. Got the post, has the car been called? In an instant, a brand new car stopped in front of the door. Zhao Wen went out to get in the car, and Qian Dianshi walked to the door. The whip wielder here spread the whip, and the animal was pulled away. Dot. In an instant, Wu Zanshan arrived. In front of the door. Zhao Wen got out of the car. Looking up, he saw a pair of foot binding strips and four pieces of foot binding cloth posted high outside the gate, with words such as, Declaration of Zhan Shifu, no noise is allowed, any violation will be punished, and other words. It turned out that it was too early, and the Wu family had not yet opened the door. 
There is a couplet on the door that reads. The Emperor's grace is mighty and the spring is bright, and the civilized society is brilliant, are ten big characters. Zhao Wen thought in his heart that this must be written by the teacher himself. He wandered outside the door for a while, then he heard a sound, the door opened, and an old housekeeper walked out come. Zhao Wen holds the name card in his hand and moves forward with a smile. Informed of his intention. The old housekeeper knew that he was the master's disciple who passed the exam last year, so he quickly asked him to sit in the concierge, took the notebook, Zhi Jian, and ran inside. After a while, he didn't come out. Zhao Wen was very confused. It turns out that these people are poor officials in the capital. I finally got through it three years ago and got a job. I expected to recruit a few more wealthy disciples so that I could pay off the old debts and pay new debts. Since the beginning of February, Wu Zanshan has seen many new candidates coming to Beijing for examinations. Met Zhang San. I inquired about Li Si, met Li Si, and inquired about Zhang San. If they were from the same prefecture and county, he would naturally find out by asking, if they were from the same prefecture and from the same county, he would not know if he asked. As long as he had some clues, he would always search for the background of these people when they met. This is probably the case as well. Wu Zanshan is not alone in this. Now let's talk about Wu Zanshan. He had already asked about Zhao Wen's belongings and knew that he was a wealthy local man in Chaoyi County and a nouveau riche. He had already planned that if he came, this would be a big deal. There are at least two to three hundred tales. When his family got the notebook, he woke up from a dream and was still in bed. When he heard the word, Zhao Wen, he said, please come and sit in the study and make a bowl of tea. The old family member agreed. Fortunately, my wife was careful and asked. Did Jimmy bring it in? While he was talking, the old man handed the book and two tails of silver to the maid and brought them in. The wife took it in her hand, weighed it, and said, I can only have two tails. Wu Zanshan refused to listen, when listening. Igu jumped out of bed in a hurry. He didn't even have time to put on his coat. He grabbed it and opened it. Sure enough, he only had two tails of silver. It was as if something was missing from his heart, and his complexion suddenly changed. After resting for a while, he suddenly smiled and said. Didn't they also bring in their door bags? The man surnamed Zhao is very rich, and he will definitely not give away just this little. The old man said, my family members also have four ounces of money. The man surnamed Zhao made it clear that Ji Jian only had two tails of silver. Wu Zanshan heard this. He was so angry that he shouted, return it to him, I won't wait for him to buy rice for the two tails of silver. Turn around and tell him not to come to see me. After saying this, he still climbed into bed angrily. Fell asleep. The old family members had no choice but to come out and reply to Zhao Wen. I said, I'm tired of the road, for my master, and I won't see any guests today. After saying this, he put the notebook on the table and put away the two ends. Zhao Wen rushed out, listless and unhappy, and went out to take the car back. Qian Dianshi then asked hurriedly. Why did you come back so quickly? Have you met? Zhao Wen said, the teacher will not see guests today. Qian Dianshi said, we should go tomorrow. Tomorrow, he got up early and ran away again. The old man didn't even reply for him. The boss let him sit alone in the concierge for a while, and then said to him, I think you should go back. You don't have to come tomorrow. After hearing this, Zhao Wen didn't understand. Just as he was about to ask him, the old man said, I'm going out with you, so you don't have to sit down. Zhao Wen had no choice but to take the car back to his apartment. Qian Dianshi knew that he had never seen him before, and knew that something was wrong here, so he calmed down his previous desire to rely on Zhao Wen to follow his teacher's path. A few days later, it was the first day of the eighth lunar month. Zhao Wen went in, worked hard, wrote three articles, and wrote them respectfully on the paper. I heard someone say that not one of the three test papers had annotations or corrections. In the future, he would be more privileged than others when he mixed up the ink rolls, so he worked hard on this. Unexpectedly, on the tenth day of the lunar month, when the sun was setting, he still had a poem that he had not written. Suddenly, many people wearing boots and hats came, shouting, grab the papers. There was also a person holding a big trumpet in his hand and blowing at him, making him anxious. Quickly pick up the pen and write. He was very unhappy. For lines of an eight-rhyme poem were missing, so he had to add twenty lines, which annoyed him greatly. In a hurry, I packed up the test basket, handed in the papers and went out. I still felt uneasy until the next day. Blue List was posted without his name, so he felt relieved. He had to work hard for nine consecutive days for the second and third games in a row. After the appearance, he was sleepy for two days and two nights before he woke up. From now on, the students will ask the examiner to pay homage together in the same year. 
Because the deputy chief examiner took leave to go home to repair the tomb and had not yet come to Beijing, only Wu Zanshan was invited. Zhao Wan, wearing clothes and hat, was also among them. Qian Dianshe slipped in and watched the excitement. I saw Wu Zanshan sitting on it watching the show. Zhao Wan was sitting far away from him. When the show ended, Wu Zanshan was not seen talking to him. After everyone dispersed, Qian Dianshe couldn't say it clearly, but said behind his back, if you have a ready-made teacher, you won't be flattered and ask us to follow the disciples. How about being a teacher? From then on, I ignored Zhao Wan. Then I thought about it, scholars are not sure, and I am afraid that he will join forces with Jia, so let's wait for him for two more days. Since Zhao Wen appeared on the scene, he has lost his head. I copied two copies of this article. Send one copy to your home and keep one copy with you so you can ask for advice at any time. People complimented him on how well he wrote his articles, so he must have graduated from Lianjia, and he himself was sure that he must have graduated from high school. For some people, the list is released on the 9th day of April and written on the 8th day of April. From a few days ago. He didn't sleep well. On the eighth day of the eighth day of the lunar month, before dawn, he woke up He Jen and asked him to go to Lulakang to wait for the letter. He Jen said, My lord. Everyone is sleeping at home right now. What are you going to do in a hurry? Zhao Wan insisted that he go. He Jen Shui said it was still early the day before, so he had to rest for a while before going. The master and servant started to quarrel. Still Chen Dianshe couldn't hear it, so he got up and helped Zhao Wen yell a few words, and then he cursed all the way out. On this day, Zhao Wen was like an ant on a hot pot, uninterested in eating and drinking, sitting still. In the afternoon, people came to tell me who had been hit again and who had been hit again. Unfortunately, He Jen went out at dawn and never came back until late at night. Zhao Wen jumped anxiously. Wait until evening. People on the street said that the list has been filled out and they are just waiting to fill in the top five. He Jen knew that there was no hope, so he just returned to his apartment. When Zhao Wen saw him, his eyes were filled with anger and he called him a heartless thing. He Jen was extremely angry and said, there is still Wu Kuei who hasn't come out yet. I'll go find out more later. While talking, he ran out, found a sesame seed seller, and negotiated with him, pretending to be a newspaper saying that his young master had won the competition, so that he could share his money. The sesame seed seller followed his words and ran to knock on the door to announce the good news. Hagen had already been waiting in front of the gate. When he saw the newspaper coming, he followed him in. Zhao Wan was naturally happy and asked how much money he would reward him with. He Jen said, this is the first reward. He should be rewarded with a few tails more. Zhao Wan said, reward him with two tails. The messenger shouted that it was too little and he must have a big ingot. Later, He Jen did his best and gave him 12 ounces of tablets. The man who brought the good news went out, and He Jen followed him out, determined to give him eight tails, while the sesame seed seller only agreed to five tails. The two were quarreling there, but Qian Dianshe came out to see Xiao Gong. They listened together and said, He Jen. Your young master has already failed to become a jinsher, so you should not defraud him of money again. Hagen said, don't talk too much. The money I deceived him has nothing to do with you. Who wants to expose this matter? Let's go in with the white knife and come out with the red knife. Just tell him to wait. Qian Dianshe heard this. If you stick out your tongue and can't retract it, you dare to talk too much. It's a pity that Zhao Wan gave away ten tails of silver in vain and rejoiced all night in vain. On the next day, no one came to congratulate him. I bought a directory and took a look. I didn't have a name, so I realized that I had been deceived last night. I was so angry that I didn't eat for a whole day. If you want to know what happens next, listen to the explanation next time. Chapter 03 I went to Huang Tang in the dark night, and I was saddened by the blue cloth and green sedan. It is said that it has been almost three months since Zhao Wan left home in the first month. Just because I have been away from home for a long time. Thousands of moods and feelings are at a loss for disposal. Just as the spring breeze blows, I plan to pack up and go back. Unexpectedly, his grandfather was eager for him to become famous, so he sent a letter and received more than 2,000 tales of silver. The book reads, if the two sides are victorious, it will be gratifying. If he reports, he will immediately donate a middle school book and serve in Beijing. The letter also stated that it was Squire Wang's idea, so I pieced together here and there to get this amount with great difficulty. I hope you will work well as an official in Beijing. If you are an official outside, no one will bully you at home. You must not be ridiculous and waste your money in vain. There are other words. Zhao Wen received this letter and answered it if he didn't like it. He had to ask Qian Dianshe to find out for him where the donation was cheap and he was ready to exchange it. That money Dian Shi originally looked down on Zhao Wen. Now I suddenly saw that he had money to donate to the official position, so I became intimate with him again, hoping to make a profit by handling the matter for him. 
Later, when he saw that Zhao Wan had entrusted him with his request, he was overjoyed. He invited him to the theater today and dinner tomorrow. He also invited a Beijing filmmaker to come and eat and drink with him every day. He said that he was his ally and recognized the secretary of the ministry. Zhao Wenxin believed it was true. One day later, he went to worship him in his clothes and clothes, and even made a favor to him. Later, I asked him to redeem it. More than 2,000 tails of silver were not enough, so he had to bear the burden of 500 tails. Zhao Wen issued the voucher and made an appointment on the date. He also wrote to his family asking them to send more money to pay him back. Here I look for my fellow villagers, go out of India, and go to the Yaman. It took more than a month to finish. The official's record is clear. From then on, Zhao Xiaoyan became Zhao Zhongxu, and it was still He Zhen who worked with him in Beijing. The words are divided into two parts. Qian Jianshu had been living in Beijing for several months. Fortunately, he met a good book clerk who came up with ideas for him. He changed the word participation in the case to a lighter one. Then he used money to donate money to reinstate the official, added some tricks, and still candidate in the ministry. He also did some tricks, and within two months, he was selected as the Jianshu of Shangrao County, Jiangxi Province. Hearing that missing points was okay, he was naturally happy. I asked about it later. On the contrary, the prefect who had promoted him in Jiangnan is now the vassal of Jiangxi. The road between enemies was narrow, but it happened to be in his hands again, and he felt very uncomfortable. He came to discuss with his ally, the one who made money from him last time. His ally said. It's easy. Mr. Su Do, who lives next door to me, is a fellow countryman of this Lord Fan Tai. Last year, when the Imperial Majesty of the Feudal Dynasty met him, Mr. Su Do even invited him to dinner, and it was his younger brother who accompanied him. The friendship between the two of them is very strong. He was muttering on the table, unable to talk, and biting his ears for a long time, not knowing what was going on. Later, when the feudal lord left the capital, he asked the captain to give him four tails of silver as a farewell gift. Qian Dianshu said, it's so friendly like him. How many more tails should be given? Why only four tails? His ally's face turned red and he said, I don't know about this, or if I give you more, we won't be able to see it. Otherwise, most of the fellow villagers would have four liang. They are high-ranking officials, so why should one be thick and the other thin? Ask other fellow villagers to watch and taste it. Qian Dianshu said, we don't care about this. But what about my affairs? His ally said, don't be busy. I'll stop for a while and go next door, spend hundreds of dollars, and write a letter to Mr. Su Do to clear things up for you. Isn't this going to end? Qian Dianshu said, a letter requires so much money? His ally said, don't be anxious. Your brother's business is my brother's business. If you don't have this idea, my brother can still serve you. At that time, Qian Dianshu asked him to leave again and again. It turns out that his ally's surname is Hu Mingli and his nickname is Vixen. If a person is shrewd and recognizes many people, he will slip away no matter where he is. This time, under the entrustment of my ally, I went to the next door that night, found Mr. Su Do, and explained my purpose of coming. He also said that he would have 50 gold coins to live in the future, so I beg you to give me a letter. Mr. Su Do said, come to think of it, we are fellow villagers, but we don't have any big friendships, so how can we write letters? Even if we write, I'm afraid it won't work. Huli said, there is a lot of control there. If you look at the money, just give him a few words and that's it. Master Su Du thought about it. The family was worried that they had no money to buy rice, the servants had to pay their wages, and his wife was still worried about redeeming the debt. He was worried there and had no way to think about it. It happened to happen. He thought. It's better to use him to deal with emergencies. Then he agreed with a smile and asked him to pick up the letter tomorrow morning. He asked again, is the money readily available? Huli said, why not? Then he got up and left. Mr. Su Du personally sent it to the gate, said, take care, and gave some instructions. Just went in. Early the next morning, Mr. Su Du got up and wrote the letter. When it was noon, Huli still didn't see the money coming. He said anxiously, don't fail. Why aren't you here at this time? The attendant invited him to eat and he refused to eat. It turned out that he had already told his wife and attendants about this last night. Everyone knows that he has the money to pay, and his wife no longer bothers to redeem the debt and the servants no longer press for payment of wages. Who would have thought that I would not be able to wait until the left and the right the next day? It really made him anxious to death. Finally, I waited until two o'clock when I heard a knock on the door. Mr. Su Du went to open the door himself. When he saw it was Huli, he was so happy that he quickly invited him in. He ordered him to make tea, get a hookah, and light the lantern. Before Huli opened his mouth, Mr. Su Du had already taken out the letter and sent it to him. Foxley took the letter out of the envelope and read it again. 
Hu Li put the envelope on the letter and said, If you really don't expect it, you will change your mind. Master Su Du heard this. A muffled thunder, thinking it was unsuccessful, the color on his face suddenly changed, and he quickly asked, What's wrong? It was unsuccessful? Hu Li replied slowly, I'm in there, I'm afraid he will escape there. But I can't get it out, there is no other way. Mr. Su Du said, But there is no one? Hu Li said, Yes, there is, but it's only half. I'm sorry for you, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Mr. Su Du said, How much is he willing to pay? Hu Li didn't answer. He took out a banknote from the tuck of his boot with the words. Pay Jingping Silver 25 tails with the check. There was a book underneath, but it was a forehangs note. Mr. Su Du's eyes burned when he looked at it, and he stretched out his hand and snatched it away. Hu Li said, Just these two I still paid 15 tails for it. You should accept the envoy first. He'll make up for it later. Master Su Du had no choice but to give him a letter. Hu Li didn't smoke or drink tea, so he took the letter and went to Qian Dianche. He told him that he had advanced a hundred tails of silver for him, but at first the Su family refused to write, but later it turned out that I didn't look good on my face. He just wrote it. Qian Dianche was so grateful that he packed his luggage overnight, planning a long trip to the province the day after tomorrow. After the settlement, only his ally brother who was in charge, and the whole matter was still unclear. Although his ally is generous on the outside, he is extremely mean on the inside. I want Qian Dianche to settle things with him, but it's hard to show off my face. Seeing that Qian Dianche had a jade leader who was worth several articles, Qian Dianche also said that he would sell him before. Hu Li came up with a plan at this point, saying that there was a customer who wanted to buy it, and he deceived him. It is estimated that I can earn a few more coins, and I am full of joy. The next day, he pretended to be ill and wrote a letter, asking the cook to bring it to see him off. The letter also said, the leader has seen his future and is not willing to pay more. He will remit the money after the sale. In the meantime, Qian Dianche had no choice but to settle the bill for the room and food, said goodbye to Zhao Wen, and left in a double mule cart. If there are words, they will be long, if there are no words, they will be short. When he arrived in Tianjin, he headed for the waterway. There were sea ships on the sea and river ships on the rivers. It didn't take him a month. Then he arrived at the provincial capital of Jiangxi province and found his whereabouts. Qi Qiao, the feudal lord, is also the guardian. He didn't dare to believe it for a while, so he waited for the lottery date and followed a group of his classmates into the second hall. He kowtowed three times to the adults under the eaves of the corridor, then got up and asked for another greeting. The adult just spread his hands, rubbed his waist, and went in without asking any questions. When Qian Dianche came, he had a lot of sweat in his hands, and he was afraid that he would not be able to reply when asked about his past. Fortunately, the adults did not remember the mistakes of the villains, and after passing this test, he put down a stone. But the vacancy he selected is now occupied by someone who took office less than three months ago. The person who signed the letter also got some big-name letters, and finally signed this letter. When the boss looks at the letter writer, he always asks him to sign for one year. It is inconvenient to withdraw him halfway. Fortunately, the man surnamed Xian was in short supply, so even if he could be idle for a year and a half, it wouldn't matter. His superiors had this idea in mind, so they didn't even list him for the job. But he didn't expect that Mr. Qian could only think of Ren. He was told to spend his free time in the provincial capital, but he couldn't stand it anymore. All day long, he was either trying to get in or looking for friends, asking questions here and there. He was too high to climb up. As long as there was anyone in the government or department team who could speak eloquently in front of his superiors, he would try his best to curry favor with them. Wear clothes and go to the mansion every day to say hello. Later, someone told him, Mr. Huang, the current candidate of the Support Bureau and Operations Office, is the number one celebrity in the nursing home. He was entrusted with everything, and when he came to the nursing home, he said one thing was one, and two things was two. In the recent relief donation case, Shangxi Fu Yuan recommended, subsidy free. Although Bu Wan has not returned, he will be off duty today, so he is a Taoist. The ministers and Taoists have always been one, so they rise and sit together with the two ministers, Fan and Zhen. So although he is still the prefect now, except for the nursing home. Fan and Nian Kei were not in his eyes, and some things had to be dismissed. Fan Zheng thought that he was a popular person in the nursing home and was going to be off duty soon, so he was given three points in everything. No more gossip. Let us say that Qian Dianche heard about this method. Then I wanted to drill with all my heart. After all, he was so meticulous in his work that he asked someone to introduce him to him before he met Mr. Huang. He recognized Mr. Huang's door, and a man named Dai Sheng who was at his door wanted to get well first. Slowly, he said what he meant, the province can't afford to be idle, and I want to ask the adults for promotion. Dai Xing said, brother, why didn't you tell me earlier? 
As a brother, I can help you with this little thing. Qian Dianxue was so happy that he couldn't close his mouth after hearing this. Dai Xing said hurriedly, in that case, I will come to see you early tomorrow morning. Dai Xing said, don't be busy. It is useless to come early. There are many people looking for him in the morning. I will see you there if I have time. If you want to come, come tomorrow evening. Qian Dianxue said hurriedly, I want to learn from you. If you can be boasted by me, I will cultivate you. It would be a great kindness for me to send an envoy to prevent my wife, children, and children from starving. After finishing speaking, he stood up and left. Dai Xing said, brother, tell me what you said. See you tomorrow night, I won't see you off either. After Qian Dianxue left. Qi Qiao came to ask Dai Xing to come in and ask a few questions. Just because Magistrate Huang had lost hundreds of tails of silver to a revenue and expenditure committee member of the support bureau today, he found out and immediately dismissed the mission, waiting for further details. Thought. In this small team of candidates, every one is a pauper, and there is really no one who can be relied on. Then he discussed the matter with Dai Sheng. It was Qian Dianxue's luck, so Dai Sheng recommended him and said, Now there is a newly elected Shangrao County Dianxue Qian, how shrewd he is. How to practice well, and he once served in a real vacancy, and now he is elected from the ministry because someone has appointed someone to postpone his appointment. If such a vacuous person is appointed, he will do his best and nothing will go wrong again. Huang the magistrate said, I have never seen this person before. Dai Xing said, he often comes to report to me. I am busy with the master's affairs and have time to see him there, so I never go back and forth. Magistrate Huang said, in this case, ask him to come to see me tomorrow night. Dai Xing agreed to a few yes s and stood there for a while. Then he retreated. On the next day, Qian Dianxue waited until it got dark and the sun was still high, so he put on his colorful clothes and mended them and ran away. Seeing two sedans lying flat outside the mansion, he staggered to Dai Xing's room and asked him to sit down. Dai Xing told him what he had boasted about last night and said, the support bureau has a revenue and expenditure task, and it must be entrusted to someone else. There is already an owner, and I took it for your brother. Stop it. There will be good news when we meet. Qian Dianxue was grateful and happy at the same time, and asked hurriedly, when did your excellency come back? Dai Xing said, I went to the court at 7 o'clock in the morning and came down at 9 o'clock. Then I heard some case. I arrived at the bureau at 12 o'clock. I had dinner there and attended to business. I just came back and couldn't smoke three packs of cigarettes. Another member of the bureau came to report to me, and he is currently receiving guests there. You can eat in this room and wait for the old man to see off the guests. After you have had your fill, it won't be too late to go back up. Qian Dianxue had no choice but to sit and wait for the time being. After a pause, he heard someone shouting. Send off guests, seeing the two committee members walking in front, and Huang Jifu following behind. When they reached the second door, the two committee members stopped. Huang Jifu patted them and went in first. The two committee members got on the sedan chair respectively. No question about going back. Here, Magistrate Huang walked into the second door and asked the steward, Have you been urged in the sedan shop? A steward replied, I have sent people to urge you three times. Magistrate Huang said, I am in the courtyard today. The nursing home also mentioned that Buwen would be able to arrive within the next two days. If the sedan chair can't be made, what can we ride on to go to the courtyard? Really these bastards. If I don't tell you, you won't urge me. The housekeepers were shocked and did not dare to say a word. They were all silent and stood with their hands lowered. After Huang Jifu finished speaking, he also walked in. After the lights were turned on, Qian Dianxue had dinner in Dai Xing's room, and then Dai Xing went in with his notebook to answer for him then came out and led him to sit down in a small flower hall to the west of the hall. At this time, Qian Dianxue was respectful and sitting there alone. It was quiet, and I waited for half an hour before I heard the sound of boots. Before entering the flower hall, he coughed again. Seeing the little attendant, he opened the curtain of the flower hall, and the adult came in, casual clothes, a fat face, his face was blue from eating cigarettes. He has a thick black beard and two eyes looking straight up. Qian Dianxue quickly knelt down, kowtowed three times like a worshipper, and stood up to say hello. His follower said hello again, took out his resume from his sleeve and presented it. Mr. Huang took it in his hand and offered to sit down. Qian Dianxue sat on the chair with only half his buttocks, squinting his face as he listened to the adult's questions. Magistrate Huang flipped through his resume, put it down casually, and asked, When did you arrive? Qian Dianxue hurriedly replied, He arrived last month. Magistrate Huang asked, Is Shang Rao's job very good? Qian Dianxue said, my lord's cultivation. But I haven't been appointed yet. At this point, Magistrate Huang called out, come, and saw the little follower coming in with a hookah to fill his cigarettes. Magistrate Huang just smoked and didn't answer. Qian Dianxue couldn't survive it. 
Then he stood up and asked for another greeting, saying, My humble working mother comes from a poor family. Although she was elected, the vassal order was not listed for a while, but I always begged you to promote me. Magistrate Huang said, There are so many people begging me, so I will always ask you to promote me. It takes hundreds of jobs to get everything done. Qian Dianshi didn't dare to speak after hearing this. I saw Magistrate Huang holding the tea bowl, and the housekeepers shouted, send off, so he had to leave. Magistrate Huang sent it to the second door and went in. When Qian Dianshi came out, he still walked to Dai Xing's room, looking sad. Changing clothes there without saying a word. Dai Xing noticed his signs and said, brother, you have finally come across the affairs in the officialdom. Where did you get entrusted with the mission as soon as we met? You have to go twice more. It doesn't mean that there is brother you in there. We brothers have nothing to do with your own affairs. It didn't matter, it was worth taking to heart, and I immediately felt uncomfortable. Stop it. Qian Dianshi said, it's not that brothers don't know this truth. But one thing, I begged him just now. His old man's tone is not very good. I'm afraid he won't be there again. Dai Xing said, don't worry, I'm here. You see he is busy all day long and there are many people looking for him. Let me tell you, don't be angry. In a team like your brothers, no one is there to greet you. If you want to see him, you may have to wait for three years without seeing him. Qian Dianshi said, I know. It's not that your brother is in there, but you can reach him there. With your brother patting your chest, what else do you have to worry about? Don't worry too much. From now on, all efforts will be made. At the same time, he asked Dai Sheng for a greeting, then resigned and returned to his apartment. Later, he went there several times, sometimes seeing him and sometimes not seeing him. Dot. Suddenly one day, Qian Dianshi was walking into the concierge. Dai Xingshi came down from the top. He smiled and said to Qian Dianshi, Brother, there is something, how do you want to thank me? I'll tell you after I've said it. Qian Dianshi had a reason for obeying, and thought about it, and said, Brother, don't take it. When people are happy, who doesn't know that Grandpa Dai is always as clear as water? Who has seen you receive a thank you gift from others? It doesn't sound like you said it either. A waiter with Dai Xing next to him heard this and said with a smile, Master Qian is really eloquent. Dai Xing said, true is true, false is false, don't joke. Let's talk about seriousness here. Qian Dianshi followed Dai Xing into the suite. The two of them muttered for a long time, not knowing what to say. I only heard the last sentence, which was in Qian Dianshi's accent, and said, every time I have your brother before I have my brother, do you and I still know each other? After he said it. Went away happily. Whether he was the one who sent the envoy to and from the country in question will be discussed later. Let's say that Magistrate Huang came back from the court one day and was having dinner at home. Suddenly someone from the court sent a corner of documents, which he opened and took a look at. This is exactly what you need to know to ensure you pass the class. As usual, expenses will be paid. It was Dai Sheng who took the lead and gathered a group of family members, wearing red hats, to go up and congratulate the master. After kowtowing, Dai Sheng replied, the green cloth sedan happened to be delivered after dinner today. My family just read the calendar. Tomorrow is a good day, so I can sit in the courtyard. Magistrate Huang nodded and asked, have you discussed the price? Dai Xing said, bring him an old blue cloth sedan and give him a limited amount of money. Magistrate Huang asked, has the old sedan been carried? Dai Xing said, the master will get a new sedan tomorrow and ask them to carry the old one. Magistrate Huang had no other words, so Dai Xing withdrew. Then all the committee members of the capital, the first county, the support bureau, and the camp office all got the letter. They all came together with notebooks in hand to express their gratitude. When only one of them came from the capital, Magistrate Huang was extremely polite to him. I have no choice but to be this official and perform this ceremony. No matter who you are, you can't escape this logic. The capital always met him according to the rules of meeting his boss. Speechless all night. Early the next morning, Magistrate Huang went up to the courtyard in a green cloth sedan, thanked Xingji, and sat in the magistrate's office again. This caused all the alternate prefects to stand up and say hello, calling, Your Excellency, one after another. Mr. Huang was making concessions there. I saw someone came to invite him to sit in the official hall of the minister and Taoist officials with the name cards of the feudal lord and the feudal lord. The prefects stood on duty again to see him out. When he arrived at the ministerial and Taoist official halls, all the adults bowed to him and congratulated him. He still greeted everyone and returned his old affiliation to the system. The adults said, we are colleagues from now on, so we will be exempted from this gift. The adults gave up their seats together, and Mr. Huang sat down on the next chair coquettishly. All readers, please remember clearly, Mr. Huang has now become a Taoist platform. The person who writes books also needs to be renamed. 
it is no longer good to call him Magistrate Huang. When I came down from the Zodiac on the same day, I took the old post and bowed first from the Fantai, then to the Nyetai, the Grain Patrol Road, the Salt Method Road, the general offices of each bureau, and the alternate roads in the province. Everyone is welcome. Along the way, there was a red umbrella in front, for soldiers from the camp office, a top horse, the rider was wearing a fifth grade medal and dragging a blue feather, two officers from the camp office, wearing a white stone cap and a gripping tiger, carried the sedan for him. The other room was running with a book protector under its arm, sweating all over its head, the two horses behind it, and the second master riding the horse, was still wearing his coat. The Zodiac was sitting in a large green cloth sedan, with a pair of large, round, black crystal glasses on his nose, and a dry cigarette in his mouth. For bearers carried him from east to west, and from west to east. The officer carrying the sedan chair kept filling his cigarettes for him. I didn't return to the mansion until half past three in the afternoon. His old habit of smoking had gotten stronger and he yawned all the time without waiting to take off his clothes. He lay down and smoked 24 bags in one breath. Those who follow him cannot say that their bellies are full of hunger. Then many alternate adults and gentlemen came to congratulate him, but Dai Sheng stood in the way of him one by one. Two more days passed. Dai Sheng wanted to curry favor with his master, so he came in when he had time and replied, now that the master has finished his shift, it happens that the day after tomorrow is my wife's birthday, so the whole family gathered together and called a play, prepared two sets of wine, and served for the master and my wife has been busy for two days. The master always wants to reward the younger ones for this little bit of face, so that the family members can show some filial piety. Huang Daotai said, why bother asking you to spend money again? Dai Xing said, money is nothing. The master is willing to reward you, and the family is willing to spend all their money. Huang Daotai said, I'm just afraid that this will cause trouble. Don't let the people in the bureau know about it, because they have no official business to mess with. And from the camp office. Dai Xing said, Master's great joy should be a lively event for two days. The Zodiac platform had nothing to say, so Dai Xing retreated and went to do his own business. Unexpectedly, the news spread. As expected, a group of battalion officers from the camp affairs office and a group of members from the support bureau had a day's work, a play and two sets of wine. They all took the notebooks and came to give gifts. Huang Daotai said, the result is not what I expected. Dai Sheng caused trouble. Dai Sheng said, it would be better if they knew. So it was decided that the warm birthday on the first day would be for the family members of the mansion, the second day would be for the battalion officers of the camp office, and on the third day it would be the turn of the committee members of the support bureau. Dot. On the first night of Nuanshu, Huang Daotai discussed with Dai Sheng, on this birthday, singing operas and drinking wine are all wasteful and not beneficial at all. Dai Sheng was about to reply when he suddenly saw a voice coming from the door. A telegram and letter arrived, stating. The call from Nanjing was sent to the support bureau, Mr. Huang Sheng. Knowing that it was an important matter, Huang Daotai quickly opened it and saw that there were only numbers on it. Huang Daotai did not recognize foreign characters, so he hurriedly invited the accountant to come and found a copy of Huayang Calendar, book, and pull out the code. Check one by one. The first eight characters are Nanchang Branch Bureau Zodiac Platform. The Zodiac was eager to see what was going on, but it happened to miss a code, so it turned out to be wrong. Huang Daotai became anxious and said, ignore him. Just leave this word blank and check what's underneath. The master pulled out three more words, which were, military uniform case. As soon as the Zodiac saw these three words, his heart jumped wildly, and he stared at him as he scrolled down. The master pulled out six more words, which were, shui cha ke, intending to uncover the ginseng. At this moment, the Zodiac platform seemed to have been struck by muffled thunder, and with a bang, he sat down on the chair. The master flipped through it again and said, there is more. Huang Daotai hurriedly asked, what else is there? As the master flipped through it, he said, Zhu Shou and Wang Ling are both planning to be dismissed, and my brother is planning to surrender Tongji. Find a solution quickly. The word, Sun, was written at the bottom. Huang Daotai knew that this telegram was from a relative of his named Wang Zhongxuan in the Liangjiang governor's office. He got wind of it and informed him. He said, where did this matter start? The master said, according to this telegram, my dear mother will come to take care of you. The discount hasn't gone out yet. Observe that if you try to find something early, it can always be saved. Zodiac Tower said, don't make any noise. I'm completely confused at the moment. Let's wait until I regain my composure before we talk again. After resting for a while, and just as he was about to speak, he suddenly saw Mr. Hu being patrolled by the higher-ups in the courtyard without waiting for an announcement. I've been barging in. Please sit down. Seeing the strangeness of his arrival, everyone retreated. Mr. Hu looked around and saw no one around, and then said, the nursing home asked me to come here, especially to inform you of a letter. 
The Zodiac Tower was in a coma. I didn't know what to answer, so I just looked at him. Mr. Hu added, the nursing home received a telegram from Nanjing, Taiwan, saying that it was about the military uniform case that year, and you were involved in it. It's really unexpected. The nursing home called to advise you. Don't take this matter to heart. After two months, if you are quiet for a while, you will always think of something for the adults. At this time, Huang Daotai was so anxious that he could not answer a word. Later, he heard Inspector Hu say some kind words about the nursing home. It was really like being reborn as parents, recreating father and mother. I couldn't even draw the expression of tears of gratitude, so I said, please thank me for my brother's grace in front of the nursing home. Brother is now a subject, and it is inconvenient to go out during the day. Wait until tomorrow night. Then go to the court in person to thank you. After saying that, Mr. Hu rushed back to sell business and resigned immediately. Huang Daotai was actually very polite this time and sent him out of the door before returning. The next person did not enter the upper room, but walked into the small living room, hands behind his back, head lowered. Pacing back and forth. Sometimes I would lie down on the Kong or sit on the chair. But when I couldn't lie down or sit for three minutes, would get up again and start circling on the ground. For about four or more days, my wife sent my mother-in-law three or four times to ask me to rest. Everyone didn't dare to look back when they saw the master like this. Later, his wife was afraid that he would suddenly fall ill, so she had to come out and persuade him for a long time, and then Huang Daotai followed him in listlessly. The next day came, which was supposed to be my wife's birthday. Because of what happened, I was completely demotivated. The wife then asked Dai Xing to come up and discuss with him, wanting to take the opera troupe away. When Dai Xing saw that his master had done something bad and who was willing to pay the unjust money, he just pushed the boat along and said. The family also knew that the master was feeling uncomfortable. Since my wife said this, let's just give my family some complimentary blessings after the occasion. After saying that, he went out and called the conductor. He turned around and said, stop singing. The man in charge said, my great-grandfather. It's for your lord's errand. It was difficult to catch this group, and they sang for at least two days before asking them to go back. Daishing said, if you don't want it, you don't want it. If you don't leave, are you still here waiting to be beaten? The person in charge was scolded a few times by him, and he also heard the bad news from the adults here. Knowing that this was unsuccessful, he had no choice but to come out dejected and ask someone to carry the box away. On the other hand, Dai Xing went to inform the bureau and camp, and everyone was convinced. Seeing this, he was happy to save a few pennies. Not a problem. In the afternoon, adults got up from bed. Wash your face and eat without saying a word. When the fun is over, it's time to turn on the lights. Dai Xing came in and said, we have been waiting outside. Please tell me, should I go to the courtyard after dinner, or should I go now? Mr. Huang said, we will go after dinner. It turned out that Mr. Huang's wife was the most knowledgeable and polite. When she heard that her husband had been demoted, she said to Dai Sheng, now that the master is going out, he can't sit in the green bay sedan. Our old blue one is he was carried away again by the sedan chair shop. Why don't you borrow one from your sweetheart? Dai Sheng said, what is going on now is confusing. It is just a telegram, and it is not accurate. According to the family's wishes, the master will continue as usual today, and it won't be too late to change it until he gets the clear message. Not to mention borrowing it from someone else. It's hard to say in terms of face either. The wife said, as far as I know, this matter cannot be false. When I went up to the courtyard in a large green cloth sedan, I was criticized by others for not picking it properly, so I thought it would be better to replace it. Anyway, sooner or later it will have to be replaced. There are many things at home when the old lady is away. It was very easy to cover him with two of the blue bay's tents they had given me. As he said this, he asked his concubine and the young lady to immediately open the box, found three blue cloth tents, and gave them to Dai Sheng to take out. Dai Sheng returned to the concierge and said. Speaking of which, our master is really pitiful. I managed to get a big green bay sedan, but I couldn't sit on it for five times, and now I can't sit on it anymore. The wife asked her to cover her head with blue cloth. It was so easy to say. Who is from the sedan chair shop? I can't get it. Fortunately, the master is confused and will let him sit down one more time tonight. Instruct the soldiers to call one or two people from the sedan chair shop early tomorrow morning, bring the guy with him, and just cover him up in our mansion. Whether Mr. Huang is still going to the courtyard in the green cloth sedan, let's hear the explanation next time. Chapter 04, Bai Jian shows mercy to celebrate her birthday, gold is valuable and she will be promoted soon. But he said that he had had dinner at the Zodiac and was enjoying himself again. While changing clothes, he coughed and sighed. After dressing up, he came out and got into the sedan chair. He still wore the red umbrella on top of the horse, and drove away with lanterns and torches. 
Arriving at the courtyard, a man walked into the official hall of the minister and the Taoist officials. When inspector who heard that he was coming, because he was always on good terms with him, he hurried in to greet him and said, the nursing home is seeing guests. We will go back later. Have you had your meal, sir? Zhu Daotai said, I have eaten. Brother, you need to change your title. Brother is a demoted person. Isn't it the same as brother? As he said that, he asked Inspector Hu to sit down and chat. Inspector Hu also sat down half-heartedly. He couldn't say more than two or three words. Then he said, I have to go up and have a look. The guests have gone, so I can go in and go back. The Zodiac Tower said, take care, again. Not long after Hu's patrol was gone, he came to invite me. Zodiac put down his horseshoe sleeves, straightened his hat with his hands, and followed in. The nursing home has already come out. As soon as he arrived at the house, Huang Daotai made a greeting, knelt down and kowtowed, then made another greeting and said, thank you for worrying about the affairs of the profession. After returning to his seat, he continued, the profession not blessed to serve adults. In the future, I would also like to ask adults to cultivate me, and my career will be as good as a cow or a horse. Guyuan said, it's something I really can't think of. But the telegram from the Taiwanese broadcaster said that even though the news had not been released yet. Yesterday, inspector who came back from patrol and told me that I have a relative in the shogunate. Why not ask him to find a way to save it? Huang Daotai said, although I have relatives from the professional level inside, I am afraid that it is not easy to talk in front of Jijun. I always ask the adults to think of a way to smooth things over. I don't dare to hope for other benefits in my career. But if I want to preserve my reputation, I must be grateful for your grace. With that said, he left his seat and asked for a greeting dot. The nurse said, I will send a telegram today. But when it comes to your father-in-law, you should also call him back and check his background. What the hell is going on? Huang Daotai said, no need to ask. As he spoke, he put his mouth in front of the nurse's ear, saying this, this, and so, and then he said loudly, you must always ask for help from adults. The nurse listened to his words. He frowned and said, brother, you were a bit careless about this and didn't arrange it well, so this went wrong. Zodiac Terrace agreed with a yes. The nursing home really comforted him and asked him to wait for the letter in the mansion. I'll send you a telegram right away. I'll have to come up with some ideas for you. Then he served tea to see the guests off. Huang Daotai resigned, an inspector who caught up and said, the nursing home has promised to find a way for you, sir. It seems that this matter must not be important. Wait until there is good news. Come immediately if you are in a humble position. Huang Daotai said, trouble. He was humble again, and then got into the sedan chair and left. As soon as he returned to the mansion, the old man's complexion was not as dull as before. After getting off the sedan chair, he did not return to the upper room until he sat down in the hall and called for invitation. Master is coming. He told him the reason and asked him to prepare a telegram. According to the nurse's words, he asked Wang Zhongxuan to find out the truth for him and reply to the telegram. The master said, this telegram has too many words. If it is sent to the telegraph office, the translation fee plus one will cost several cents. Why don't we put in the trouble? Turn it over and send it away. The Zodiac Tower nodded, yes. The master then took the Huayang calendar, checked the new telegraph code section, wrote out the codes one by one, and sent it to the second master. The Zodiac Tower had just been go back to the upper room and take off your clothes. Discussing the grace of nursing home with my wife. My wife was also really grateful and said, when we have benefited, how can we make up for it and repay it to others? She fell asleep without saying anything at that moment. Let's say that Dai Xing saw the master sending a telegram. When the master came in, he came in and asked the master. Only then did we know the details. The master said, the nursing home is very willing to help with this matter. It seems that there is still something to be done. Dai Xing snorted and sneered, just wait. I have already packed up my bedding and waited. Think about it. Officials are really evildoers. You see, he looked the same after being promoted to an official position the day before yesterday, and he looks completely different today after being demoted. It's no different from us, who are family members. If we resign from our boss family, we will still have the same income as the Western families. There's only one emperor for officials, so we can't escape there. You said that if the nurse is willing to help, the nurse will return to his post. You just listen to him without even making a decision. Let's see what happens next. It would be best if we didn't have to pack up everything. One of them said, and the other smiled and went out. Master is not as talkative as him. It doesn't matter if we each return to our houses. Let's say that the Zodiac had been waiting in the mansion for three days, but no one came to deliver the letter. He was as anxious as an ant on a hot pot. He walked in and out, restless. I really don't believe it, the snobbery of officialdom. 
It's actually more powerful than Master Zhang's talisman on Longhu Mountain. In the past, when the zodiac was just going to work, the gates were packed with cars and horses, and there were still many people who had to be seen. But now, not a single one of them has been promoted by him. Shen Dianshi, the Revenue and Expenditure Committee member of the New Committee Support Bureau, has also disappeared, and there has been no trace of him in Dai Sheng's room for four or five days. The Zodiac didn't care about this. But the person that Inspector who has always been his best friend and most concerned about is not coming today. It can be seen that something is not good. After dinner on the fourth day, the old man had given up and gave up all his thoughts. As soon as it got dark, Dai Gao suddenly saw Dai Gao come in happily with a letter and said, We heard from the court. This letter was sent by Mr. Hu, the inspector of Wanzhou. There is good news about things in Nanjing, so the court heard it. Zhuang Datai quickly took it and opened it, and saw what was written on it. Respectfully, I was sent to Fuxian for stealing my humble position, and I received the constitution-making telegram. The matter has not yet been reported, and I have entrusted Guo Dao to investigate and deal with it. It will definitely turn around. Please ask Xian to come to the hospital immediately. I sincerely submit this. Congratulations to my lord for your blessings. Begging for advice. I would like to express my humble opinion to you. Before Huang Daotai finished reading, he said, Zhong Quan is too ridiculous about this matter. There is no trace now, so why send such a telegram? Really ridiculous. Holding the letter in one hand and shouting in the other, he rushed to the room to tell his wife. Everyone listened and were naturally happy. He immediately changed his clothes and went up to the courtyard in a sedan. When he arrived at the official hall, inspector who came to say hello first. This time the Zodiac platform was not as impressive as that night, so he stood up and talked to him and refused to let him sit down. Inspector who didn't dare to sit down. Huang Daotai said, there are such ridiculous people in the world. They want us to send a telegram out of thin air at the expense of our relatives. Now that Gua has been appointed to investigate and investigate, it will be easier to talk about it. With that said, Inspector Hu went in and came back to ask for an audience. This time Huang Daotai went in, but his etiquette changed. He still followed the rules of their department and Taoist department and only greeted each other with a greeting, unlike that night. Say hello repeatedly. The nurse told him, after my brother left that day, my brother sent a telegram to Jiangning Fantai. Because he is also my brother's friend, I asked him to find a way for my brother. I just received his call back. Please read it. Said one side. On the other hand, he took out the telegram and showed it to the Zodiac. What was written on it was, Jiang Dian is kindly informed. The incident of Huang Dao has been completed. Following the instructions of Daida, the handsome man was a little angry, and ordered Guo Dao to check and verify. A certain Yu Jian of our company. After reading Huang Dao Tai, he thanked you to the nursing home again. After saying some words of gratitude, he resigned. When I returned to the mansion, I didn't know who had sent the letter. All the bureau and camp committee members were waiting in the mansion to pay their respects. A few people met at the Zodiac Tower, but the rest were all tired of talking, so everyone went back. Only Qian Dianshi stayed away from the concierge. He discussed with Dai Sheng and asked him to come back in his place. He said, I know that you have been feeling unwell these past two days and dare not disturb me, so I didn't sing the play on my wife's birthday. Now there is no it's over. Besides, I am a well-educated person, so I am different from others, so I should take the lead and invite my colleagues and colleagues from two places to come and congratulate me. Brother, how about tomorrow? If you're bothered, just go up and reply for me. Dai Sheng said, Brother, you're welcome. It was really deserted here the past two days. I expected you to come and talk, but you didn't come either. It's happening again now. Qian Dianshi blushed and said, It's not that I don't want to come, I'm afraid that he will be unhappy and embarrassed. This is it now. This is also a little bit of filial piety on our part, which is indispensable. Dai Xing said, I understand. Don't be too busy. I'll send you the letter on a fixed date. It turns out that after Qian Dianshi whispered to Dai Xing that day, he sent the letter to the branch the next day. He was appointed as the Revenue and Expenditure Committee member. All thank yous and errands are business as usual and there is no need to go into details. Whenever you write a book and describe something, there are bright points, dark points, and supplementary points. The difference in Xian Dian's history this time is a combination of dark points and supplementary points, which the judge must know. No more gossip. After Qian Dianshi left that day, Dai Xing thought that this was a good idea and immediately went to the room. He didn't mention Qian Dianshi's idea, but his own. He said, it was my wife's birthday the day before yesterday. My family was supposed to do it for my wife. Birthday wishes. This telegram just happened to come, causing trouble for the past few days. My family didn't even eat for several days, and couldn't sleep at night. I thought to myself, it's hard to follow a master, 
but I always hope that the master will be prosperous, promoted and rich. Besides, the official voice of the master. Number 1 in unifying Jiangxi, there will definitely be no mistakes. A few days ago, among my family and friends, there were still a few who were dejected all day and night, thinking about asking Mr. So or Mr. So to recommend jobs outside, but they refused to do anything in the mansion. These heartless things really make my family hate them so much. Huang Daotai said, these heartless bastards, are they still useful? Which one is it? Get rid of him immediately. Dai Xing said, there's no need to mention the name. As the saying goes, adults don't remember the mistakes of villains. These heartless things will never have a good time in the future, just wait and see. At that moment, my wife also helped to persuade him, and the Zodiac was speechless at first, and then talked about how to celebrate his birthday depending on the day. Mr. Qian is the leader in the bureau, and he will do the same thing as he said last time. The Zodiac obliged. It just depends on the day, starting from the day after tomorrow. Dai Xing came out and informed Qian Dianshi. It was still the first day for everyone to celebrate their birthdays, the second day for the bureau, and the third day for the battalion office, so they lined up next to each other. Send a note to the county. Ask him to inform the school teacher to seal the troops box. Within half a day, the same waiter came to the mansion with the opera box. First of all, I would like to see Mr. Dai, the master of the door, to say hello. The leader said, my eldest uncle. Didn't you sing the song last time? It's so bad that we look for people in the east and west, just to do errands for adults, to make money and to save face. I know that there will be a thunder in a long time, and I will stop singing. My great-grandfather. That really kills the villain. A full compensation of 124 pounds was made. I just had a pair of pants left and didn't win. Fortunately, he is still our missionary today. He has given us some face, and we can't wait to do our best to repay him. Grandpa, think about it, in our team there is an old student, a colorful face, a junior student, and a shirt, all of them are croaking. The top-ranked characters are, Sai Jushian for the old student, Sai Shushan for the colorful face, Sai Suyun for the junior student, and Sai Yiyun for the shirt. Dai Xing said, why are they all race? I'm just afraid I won't be able to compete. The leader said anxiously, this is the famous, for competitions, in Jiangxi. Who doesn't know? When the show started and the elder heard it, he knew we were not telling lies. Dai Xing said, if you sing well, you will have nothing to say, if you sing poorly, you will be sent to the county and you will be rewarded with 300 boards and a shackle. The leader said, if you don't sing well, your great master will forgive you, if you sing well. Not to mention, if your eldest grandpa just said a word, I wouldn't dare to think that if you reward two of us with the ingots in your treasury to make up for the last time, then your eldest grandpa is cultivating a villain. Dai Xing said, he has money in his hands. I want to reward you, but he refuses and has no idea. The person in charge said, Master, don't hide it from me. Who doesn't know that Mr. Dai from the support bureau says one is one and two is two? As long as you tell me, don't say one ingot, it's thousands. You can take all the tens of thousands, Dai Xing said. That's good. I have all this money, so I won't be a doorman here anymore. While we were talking, Dai Xing happened to be called from above, and he interrupted his words. If you have words, you will be long, if you have nothing to say, you will be short. In a blink of an eye, the day of Nguan's show came. The rules in the team. The gong was about to start at two o'clock. Because of this incident, the Lord took three days off. After lunch in the mansion, he and his wife went out to sit in the hall and listen to the play. There were also ants and ladies, all dressed up like butterflies, accompanying them to watch the show. There is also a young master in the Zodiac who is only 13 years old this year and was raised by his concubine. Because the wife has no son, she loves him like a treasure and spoils the young master's temper more than anyone else. He said that if you want the sun in the sky, someone must hold a ladder. Otherwise, once his arrogance comes out, even ten masters can't beat him. On this day of opera singing, he had been in the theater early in the morning, wearing a beard, and playing with guns and sticks there. The people in the team are just young masters, so they don't dare to say more. Later, a clown singer couldn't stand it and said, My young master, we are singing here, but you are here to make a guest appearance. The young master didn't understand. After hearing this, the second master raised his eyebrows at the clown. He said that he had ruined the young master and must go back. The clown was dissatisfied, and the two started fighting. The waiter couldn't see it, so he came over and shouted down the clown. He also came over to apologize for the second master, and persuaded him to go to the hall with the young master to watch the show. There were a lot of people in the theater and it was no fun to offend the young master. The second master had just come out with the young master. The young master has always stolen someone's beard and hidden it in his sleeve. The person in charge checked but didn't dare to ask. When it gets dark, the gongs are played on the stage in preparation for longevity. 
The master and his wife went in together and dressed up. The master wore a patchwork gown with pearls, and the wife wore a red skirt and cloak. They both stood in front of the hall and saluted with the audience. First it was people from his own family, and then Dai Sheng led his family members. Dai Sheng wore a red tassel hat and a yuanqing coat. The rest also wore mandarin jackets, and some wore only a long robe, all kowtowing upward. The master stood on top and bowed in return. My wife is also blessed. All the family members kowtowed. All the masters saluted. My wife avoided it, but the zodiac platform came out for a while. Everyone dispersed. Then all the provincial officials, from the prefect level down, came to get copies. The zodiac ordered everyone to block the way. Qian Dianxi alone does not care whether there are people in the hall or not. Wearing a colorfully painted python robe and a five great award letter on his head, he walked to the center, knelt down and kowtowed three times, got up to say hello, and then went to see his wife in person to kowtow and congratulate her. When the wife saw him coming in, she had already walked away. The zodiac was polite to him again. Let him watch the show here. He said, the humble position is no better than others, and I deserve to be served here. After everything was done, the gongs were started, dances were added, and some dramas were rehearsed. It was not until half past twelve o'clock that everything was ready. But there are quite a few people giving gifts on this day. It's just that there are mostly wine, candles, cakes and peaches, screens, and the like, and Dai Sheng is responsible for them all. When someone gives something as a gift, the amount of money should be recorded in the account one by one. Dai Sheng also asked people if they wanted door bags. There were also two bags and one bag. It was really small and big and I didn't donate them. A little adds up to a lot, and it adds up to a lot. There are also some candidates who know that the Huangdou Tai Tang Nguyen is good and can talk nicely, so they use this as an excuse to send a hundred tails, some fifty tails, and some clothes, materials, and gold items. Not to mention the door bags. Anyone who brings cash, clothing materials, or gold utensils will be handed over immediately because the wife has given instructions. For the rest, the account will be handed in after the gong is stopped in the evening, and the wife will have to count it in person before going to bed. In the blink of an eye, three days have passed, and the zodiac stage has been cancelled. A few days later, all the colleagues who came to pay homage to his birthday had to go and say goodbye. Secretly, he asked someone to go to Guadaotai to take care of things and gave him 10,000 silver. Guadaotai cleared the air for him and said something like, there are reasons for the incident, but there is no solid evidence. Reported to the system. Because he got the letter from the nurse, he interceded on his behalf, and it was difficult to save his face, so he put the matter aside. 